Hi, everybody. Meteorologist Joe Chaffee. Weather in five, five days and five minutes. Let's uh, look ahead to this coming week, <clears throat> which is going to feature some very warm to hot weather. It looks like we can back away from the uh, idea of a long, continuous heat wave based on what I'm looking at, uh, what I looked at overnight and looking at today. For Monday, we'll be in the low to middle 80s. It'll be a very warm. It'll be a very humid day. We'll have a south wind. I think we'll have clouds and some sunshine. There's a little bit of rain that's going to move through parts of the area from eastern PA to southern New England overnight into tomorrow morning. It really is not going to amount to too much. Uh, we're looking at a few pockets of a half an inch, mainly as you go south of New York City and north of Philadelphia and also back into parts of mes western Maryland. Everywhere else, the rainfall amounts are all pretty much a quarter of an inch or less little bit, a couple of pockets of uh, half an inch also down in South Jersey. But this is really not going to uh, amount to too much. We don't have the kind of forcing that could get us into, say, a widespread one to two inch rainfall. It's just not there. To, uh, Tuesday, we're going to have a hot and humid day and we have a cold front that's approaching. Uh, there'll be uh, clouds and some sunshine. That's going to limit how hot temperatures get. But upper 80s to low 90s. Uh, seem to be a, uh, a good way to look at Tuesday. The front will come through and there could be a shower or thunderstorm with it. Not looking for any severe weather risk for the time being. Uh, but And I'm not looking for widespread shower or thunderstorm activity. So most of the area will my, may wind up not getting very much of anything. Wednesday, uh, we're going to start to heat up. Now, a lot's going to depend on the wind direction. In southern New England, it's mostly south, southwest and Long Island. So we're looking at Highs probably reaching up to around or just over 90. Uh, lower 90s uh, everywhere else, I think, is a pretty good bet. Maybe the odd hot spot will get to 94 or 5. Uh, say uh, some of the uh, areas near warmer urban centers like uh, Newark, for example, or possibly even a few pockets in southern New Jersey. Thursday will be the hot day this week with highs middle to upper 90s. And sunshine. I don't see any thunderstorm risks for Wednesday or for Thursday, but now this next weather front is going to uh, uh, move in a little faster. So Friday's highs, I think mainly because that we will have some showers and thunderstorms running around both early and late in the day. Uh, it, that will actually, and, and also the wind probably will be off the ocean because the front will come through and kind of stall out. So most highs will be in the mid 80s to around 90 degrees so that at least takes away from the idea that we're going to get uh, into some significant heat uh, clouds are approaching here's this upper air disturbance uh, and uh, weak area of low pressure that's moving in for tonight you can see that area there a few lightning strikes occurring at the uh, two o'clock hour in parts of north carolina the clouds extending west back into kentucky and tennessee uh, where they've been getting clobbered with rain and some areas still getting some rain there. But you can see the area on the radar again as of uh, about 2.15 Eastern time. Let me take a look at that. I'm just going to see if I can... Nope, it, it is... Too, okay, just wanted to make sure. Uh, 2.15 in Eastern time. Uh, but you can see the uh, radar echoes here in southern Pennsylvania and into West Virginia. Some of these are producing heavy downpours. But I'm, I'm thinking that this area may actually weaken some as it moves eastward during the overnight. So that's why the amounts that you saw there on the weather maps, <clears throat> not really all that big. The Storm Prediction Center for today, marginal risk in southern Virginia, North Carolina. Marginal risk from Minnesota, western Wisconsin, down through Iowa to portions of Nebraska, with a small area of slight risk being indicated in southeastern Minnesota. Moving into tomorrow, we're looking at <coughs> excuse me, a slight risk for severe weather in Ohio, into northern Kentucky and southeastern Indiana, with a slight risk reaching into western Pennsylvania. Day three, which is Tuesday into Wednesday, that's the day we have that first weather front that we're going to see this week, the first of two. Uh, no severe weather risk being indicated by the Storm Prediction Center at this time. And in terms of rainfall over the next seven days, a little more bullish uh, for rainfall, uh, indicating three quarters of an inch to as much as some, an inch and a half for southern and southeastern New England, down into Pennsylvania and New Jersey, some pockets of heavier amounts in the central Appalachians, also along the central Gulf Coast. 
where we could see up to several inches of rain there and much needed plenty of rain in the southwestern part of the United States. And I just wanted to take a look at the upper air pattern because it's kind of interesting here what's happening. We've been talking about the fact that you've got the Bermuda high to the east, east and the heat ridge that's out to our west. And they were going to couple together uh, and potentially set up another heat wave. Well, that coupling never really does occur because there's uh, the energy from Canada. There's enough of it that drops far enough south that splits the two highs. So you've got the one high offshore, you've got the other high out to the west, uh, and in between, there's room for a little trough to dip on down and bring through a cold front, and that would cut off the heat, at least temporarily. Now, one of the issues for uh, next weekend, for Saturday now, has uh, developed, and that is that the front could stall, the Friday front could stall Friday night into Saturday, leaving us with some lingering rain or showers, We'll have to wait and see how real that is. Uh, the bottom part of that trough just sort of hangs down south of the, the main flow that's up in Canada. So if it is correct, we could wind up seeing some showers next Saturday. And then it turns hot again for Sunday into Monday, August 8th, before another weather front comes through with showers and thunderstorms. And actually, when we look at the pattern going forward... Uh, some of the models are showing some uh, rather robust trough coming down into the east in the longer range around, say, Wednesday, August 10th, Thursday, August 11th. If this is correct, that is going to bring down a significantly cool air mass into the eastern part of, of the United States. So uh, we'll see if that winds up being uh, something real uh, because uh, not sure yet. It's too far out. But that's a fairly deep trough that's being indicated by the GFS uh, and to a certain extent, also, the European has a similar idea. So uh, as far as the way the surface map looks, uh, we've got this uh, system for tonight. You see the rain there moving overnight into tomorrow morning. Doesn't amount to too much. Uh, then the front for Tuesday with some showers and storms. Uh, models are not particularly bullish uh, because the upper air is not really all that supportive. We start to turn hot on Wednesday and hot on Thursday. Thursday, I think, will be the hottest day of the week. Then the Friday front comes in. This is Friday morning uh, with the front right along the coast from Boston to New York City to Washington, D.C. And that sets off some showers and thunderstorms during the day on and off during the day on Friday, and particularly into Friday evening, uh, if that's the case. And again, that front's going to temporarily stall out, which would linger some showers into at least part of Saturday before weather conditions start to improve after that. And then we turn hot and humid with maybe a chance of a couple of thunderstorms next Monday. And then a stronger cold front uh, that uh, we'll, that we show, showed you on the long range. One front comes through on Monday, the the 9th of, I'm sorry, two, Monday evening, the 9th, the 9th, the 8th of August. And uh, similar to the one for the end of next week where it kind of stalls out, but then a more important front, if the models are correct, with a rather robust cool air mass uh, just in time for the end of the week of August 8th. So you got a full long range outlook here. Uh, not only do you have the week ahead for you, but you got the long range uh, as well. So have a great rest of your Sunday. Uh, just again, I've been reminding everybody, the Joe and Joe Weather Show will not be back until Tuesday, Tuesday at 730 Eastern time. So enjoy the rest of your, your day.